So good evening to all. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Gritsu Mittenland, if I can get it right, as they say in my other country in Switzerland. Um, just to tell you a word about what is the ELFR, and Dietmar will introduce his own organization. The ELFR is a liberal think tank, and we are exploring solutions for European issues. We are open to a broad discussion with people and institutions within the EU and around the globe. We are glad to cooperate with our organizations, as we are doing tonight with the Center for Social Media in Vienna. And I'm glad to introduce Dietmar Pichler, who is the co-founder of the Center for Digital Media Literacy in Austria. Dietmar Pichler is a board member for international relations of the Vienna at Vienna Goes to Europe, programmatic director and co-founder of the Center for Digital Media Literacy, and a political strategist at Unlimited Democracy. We'll also have tonight with us the other panelists, Emanuele Lombardini, who many of you already know. He is a journalist and editor-in-chief of the ELFR blog in Italy. He works for Avenire, the third largest uh, newspaper, a journalist newspaper. And Teresa Zettel, she's a social media and digital marketing expert in Germany, and she's a co-founder of the European Liberals for Reform. And she just got recently elected into the ALDE Individual Member Steering Committee with a term starting on January the 1st, 2022. And I am Piotr Atzia, and I'll be moderating tonight. I hope I won't need too much need to moderate. And um, I used to work for the Eurovision in Geneva, and now I'm one of the co-founders of the ELFR with Teresa and other people. So with this, I'll hand over to Dietmar, who will introduce his subject. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Good evening to everybody. I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad that you're devoted to this important topic of media literacy and, and disinformation. Um, yes, I'm co-founder of the Center for Digital Literacy or Digital Media Literacy. And what we basically are doing, we are very devoted to adult education. So we want um, to, to engage corporations to, to teach their employees in media literacy because we don't believe that schools, especially elementary schools, are enough. And what we also do is we make a lot of awareness for this topic. This is what we also do via the association, which I'm a member of and also co-founder, so European Democratic Values. So I think um, we share a lot of common values. So once again, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm, I'm admitting new guests, that's why I am, you <clears throat> see me busy. Um, so Dietmar, perhaps you would like to start with your um, introducing your subject. Uh, we have, a, let's say, about five minutes to introduce your subject, your point of view, and we'll go through all three panelists, and then we'll be you may want to discuss between the panelists and open it to the participants. And um, uh, we'll ask all participants except the speaker in this minute, Dietmar, to please mute your microphones uh, while uh, you're not called to speak. And if you want to speak, please raise your hand and we'll give you uh, a chance to speak as soon as possible. Thank you. Over to you, Dietmar. Well, uh, maybe I'll start with telling you a little bit about my story, about my history, how I was um, learning about uh, media literacy, what it actually is, or what it actually means for our society. I was uh, working in public health and in um, providing scientific studies, especially in the medical field. I'm not a doctor, but I was working in libraries and I was uh, working in public health communication for more than 10 years. And you can imagine that um, even 10 years before, uh, 10 years ago, there was a lot of discussion in our field about um, 
how can we provide information to the public? How can we provide a medical or scientific, even scientific or vaccination campaigns or something like that to the public? And as some of you maybe remember the um, anti-vaccination movement, it was already existing, but it was very small and people were not talking about it a lot. So we had this problem and I wanted to do something. I wanted to, to, to work in media literacy. I wanted to work against disinformation, but I can tell you it was not easy. Nobody was um, reflecting on it. They called it some kind of a niche uh, and they asked me why I'm diving into this scene, why I'm checking social media. Nobody cares about social media, but actually it was where the so-called usual people or normal people were doing already their so-called research, yeah, which is not research like we um, know at the moment. And then there was something else. I, I came back from uh, Ukraine in, in 2014 or in 2013 to Vienna, and I saw that there was a lot of Russian disinformation, not only about Ukraine, but also about Europe, about the European Union. There was a little bit like a Cold War situation. And a lot of people here in the West or in Western Europe believed anything they heard on, on, on social media. And we saw what Russia Today, Sputnik News, and uh, not only state-founded alternative media, but also um, blogs and, and conspiracy theorists and propagandists are actually able to do without any kind of shield. Society, the European Union, our politicians, parliaments, we were not prepared. We were not prepared at all in 2014. In 2015, um, as I guess all of you remember, we had the refugee crisis. It was a very difficult um, situation for Europe. I don't want to, to defend uh, or say that th th there were, were no problems. But we also saw that a lot of people used it for political purposes. A lot of fake news and disinformation campaigns um, we're spreading all um, over the European continent, not only within the European Union. Once again, we were almost not prepared at all. And now we have the situation with the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think there is a little bit of awareness in the society. And this is why I decided in um, 2021, even if we had a small budget and small resources to established a disinformation awareness day and to look for stakeholders look for supporters and i'm very um, glad i found uh, teresa helped me a lot and was, was spreading um, our day and we want uh, our plan is that in the next five years we make this day bigger we want to raise awareness for the struggle um, we actually face with with this information because i think it's the most uh, dangerous um, threat for democracies, uh, especially in, in, in Europe, because we have freedom of speech, we have um, freedom of the press. And if we want to protect that, if we want, if we really believe in our liberal democracy, we need to work on the uh, media literacy of the population, because if we don't, we need to cut off a lot of channels and that would harm our freedom of speech. And this is what we, um, with our political values, don't want. Uh, thank you, Dietmar. That's, that's a very clear. Um, uh, Theresa, if you'd like to carry on now uh, with your presentation, after unmuting, of course. Yes. <laughs> Um, I have prepared a little PowerPoint presentation, which I will share with you. Good. Yeah, what is social media? Maybe we start with this. Um, social media are websites or applications that are designed to share content quickly and in real time. It can be any communication tool that allows users to share their opinion or content, such as pictures and videos broadly with the public. It is accessible for everyone with internet, given that the government doesn't restrict the access like in China or North Korea. And it is unfortunately relatively uncensored. Um, there's fewer limitations in what to be shared than in other means of mass communication, such as newspapers, radio or television. 
Um, for instance, um, on social media, you find hate speech, which is most likely not going to be published in newspapers, radio or television. Um, there are several types of social media. For instance, the social networks, they specialize in connecting and exchanging thoughts, ideas and uh, content with other users. Um, the examples are Facebook, Twitter, and in a more professional way, LinkedIn. Then you have media networks. They specialize in distributing content like photographs and videos. Um, and users can like, dislike, comment to videos or subscribe to the channel, which is Instagram also with their yeah, newest um, add-on with those reels. Um, YouTube, of course, and TikTok. And then you have discussion networks. They specialize in posts to spark in depth discussion among users like Reddit or even the simplest, simplest uh, WordPress blogs, um, also like our ELFR blog. <laughs> Piotr, maybe you can also put the link then into the chat later. Yeah, and then um, there is not only disinformation on social media as one of the challenges, it is also trolls. Trolls um, can be anyone with access to social media and who is able to sign up on social media and not only with their real identity, but also with fake identities. I will have an example later on. Two, bully or mock other users on social media anonymously. Well, rather anonymously because due to the IP address, you could still um, find out. Um, then to do illegal activities such as fraud, I used here as an example, the lover boys, those um, yeah, men, widowed men mostly, um, that try to um, bait women um, to then have them send money, for instance. Then to spread disinformation, then we go here back to Dietmar's point. And um, also for creating reach for political accounts, which is mostly the case for the right-wing populists. What is trolling? It refers to writing provocative messages without making direct insults, mostly by fake accounts that have been set up exactly for this one purpose. The so-called trolls violate community guidelines. And when they get kicked off of Facebook or wherever, they will just make up a new account and be back with a different fake name. They stir up conflict and can be hurtful to certain members or entire groups. Um, while trolling can be harmless itself, some posts degenerate and can be very hurtful to the reader. The line to cyberbullying is therefore sometimes very fine. Um, and then those messages or comments they are posting are intended to outrage or challenge readers in order to provoke a reaction in a forum or in comments. Sometimes people who are affiliated with a forum or Facebook site or Twitter account sometimes act like trolls in the comment section to raise the organic reach. For instance, um, sometimes you see people um, reacting to right-wing populists Facebook site and they don't understand when they comment on this, also when it is criticism on the, on the right-wing populism, um, they are actually raising the organic reach. And the more people um, actually have it on, on their newsfeed and um, the right-wing populism is brought more to attention than if nobody comments. So don't feed the trolls. I have found an example about a fake account. It is a uh, German politician and um, I censored who it is, but on Twitter, I came across this. And uh, yeah, you can see it is more or less exactly the same. You see the same emojis and 
the same news and then it was even posted on the same day. Is it coincidence? I don't think so. Here's another um, example of this. You see it is except, ex exactly the same tweet. Also the way it is tweeted, because usually you would just click on retweet and not put RT and from whom you retweet it. That is very, um, yeah, you wouldn't do that. And then you see it is the same date, it is the same time, and the same application is used um, to have his tweet retweeted. Yeah, and why would you do that? Maybe because if you show a half-naked woman, you get more attention than with your actual uh, profile. How can you tell a fake from a real profile? Like here, um, as you can see, the, the Twitter name would be Echte Demokraten, which means real Democrats. And to be honest, would a um, Democrat, a woman in politics, would she show up like this in her profile picture? No, she wouldn't, because nobody would take her serious. So what can you do to find out? You can Google the name and see whether she or he is a real politician. I did that with uh, Vanessa Giordano and I found out, oh, she's an actress, a singer and a writer in Canada, but she's not the person in the picture. So I saved the profile picture and did a Google picture reverse search. And then I found out, oops, that is Tara Reid. Tara Reid is an actress and model that was real famous in the 2000 years. So yeah, that is how you can find out whether um, you're facing a troll or not. And as I said before, one advice, don't feed the trolls. Thank you for your interest so far. Thank you. And um, thank you, Teresa. And now, Manuela, if you would like to go on with your um, information on your side. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to start uh, with a speech with a sentence that is very popular in Italy, I'm Italian. Uh, when we speak about uh, fake news and disinformation, it's very popular in Italy because uh, uh, was bequeathed for by a, a famous semiologist and uh, and writer. Uh, his name was uh, Umberto Eco. And speaking about uh, the net, the internet, uh, he said, "Internet gave voices to imbeciles." And uh, almost seven years after after his death, we can say uh, Umberto Eco had reason. We can see in Italy, especially this, in this pandemic period, but since um, a lot of years, uh, and with people who boast uh, having studied uh, at, the, at the Life University, uh, and also probably indicated this uh, in, in their Facebook profile, uh, like, like if this uh, can be a, a, a proud. And, uh, these people allow themselves to discredit science and to discredit journalists and to discredit, uh, uh, well, what kind of person, whatever kind of person uh, try to, to make uh, uh, thoughts uh, uh, that, that are not fake news. And, but the most, the most caring situation uh, is uh, that mostly of them are people that left school very soon and they contest doctors and scientists, uh, even if they aren't um, able to write something in, in a correct Italian. Um, they don't know grammar rules. And despite of this, they, uh, they think they, they, they can contest science or information or newspapers uh, and, and so on. And uh, from the top of their ignorance, they say, it's not the degree and study to get to know a topic. Please study and go on YouTube for it. The current situation about fake news is divided in some different situation, uh, all held together by a unique red line. Uh, the use that some politics do of fake, 
fake news. Not only red wings in Italy, uh, politicians, a lot of uh, politicians of, of, of different parts and some populist parties, some, uh, some politics without uh, a specific party. Uh, the thing that must comes to eye it, uh, when we speak about this information and fake news in Italy that uh, it is almost exclusively um, mostly linked to, to people uh, that have uh, or had uh, a background uh, uh, with the right or far right parties even if they after change it. Recently, an investigation by the online newspaper The Post Internazionale, and even uh, earlier by a right program, revealed how the mechanism for creating fake news in Italy has become a huge search of income for those who feed it. Uh, we are talking both of structured link to uh, far right parties, which feed this mechanism by trying a, a political affliction. They say, um, Anyone who says uh, any say anyone who says different thoughts about uh, what we thought is a left wing, and all those are, uh, uh, that, that think that like those uh, are are left wing too. So they 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 put uh, uh, they, they put uh, something related to the politics even within with this not necessary. This sentence is valid also for scientists. Or medics, no matter if they give correct information, they are against the fake news spreader, so they are paid by, by the left or, or by the new world order. Uh, and this, and for me, that I am a journalist, the worst thing is that the things uh, is also with newspapers, magazines, or, or even entire television. For example, the Bible of, uh, of fake news is Bio Blue. Rio Blue is a TV channel founded by Claudio Messora. This is an Italian journalist, former head of press of populist five star movement uh, at the European Parliament. Uh, he was fired by the party and then he started a YouTube channel spreading a lot of fake news of various kinds of fake news, like Calergy Plan, COVID is, a, is an influence various kinds of, of conspiracy and people's goes on on a, on this YouTube channel and on they, they uh, this YouTube channel goes with a with a famous blog also called Be Blue and 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 he he collect uh, twenty thousand heroes uh, of advertising each month to feed this blog and to feed uh, uh, the new the YouTube channel. When YouTube channel, when YouTube closed the channel, he opens the, the television using only using money donations of, of people. So this is to say how is, uh, how is the situation? The galaxy of deniers, uh, conspiracy theorists and fake news sites in Italy is very, very big. Uh, and one of the characteristics is, uh, is that the, the audience uh, is very old, over 14 up to over 65, uh, of low education, uh, and uh, that almost uh, uh, people who, uh, who people that manage this uh, this blog or these sites always ask for money to, to be fed, uh, convincing people that they are silenced by the mainstream media, so they, they, they need to, to raise the voice. Uh, in Italy, some of the most sensational theories uh, fed by these sites, as for example, the denial of the connection between HIV and the ADS. Uh, the precise, the, the precise uh, uh, thesis is uh, that ADS is not an infectious disease, is not contagious, is, and is not caused by a virus, for example. Uh, or all, all of you, I think uh, you uh, you have seen on the TV when uh, in Italy uh, had the 
uh, the big explosion of pandemic in February 2020, there is a, a, a city, Pergamo city, uh, where is the, the focus point of the, this pandemic? Uh, the, there was a, a parade of military uh, military vehicles uh, in which uh, uh, there are coffins that, uh, that are taken away. And these sites, uh, these people uh, says that uh, it's, it was all a cinematic, cinematic staging. This was totally disrespectful for uh, 120,000 uh, uh, deaths uh, of this pandemic in Italy. Uh, and all, of course, um, uh, all of these, uh, some kind of gurus are, are ob obviously anti-EU, anti-LGBT and anti-Pope Francis. This is a, an important situation in Italy because as you know, Italy uh, has a, a Catholic background. And uh, uh, so this is not the secondary questions. Uh, this fake news spreaders uh, find a side uh, on an audience that in part uh, uh, is uh, uh, made by uh, a, a traditional Catholic uh, world uh, that challenges the modernism and progressivism of Pope Francis. And this slice of Catholic world not just uh, contest uh, the pastoral policies of the Pope Francis, but uh, al also uses homilies during Holy Mass and social media to spread fake news. For example, that vaccines contains mi microchips uh, or are made with aborted fetuses. So uh, the, uh, they say, if you are Catholic, you have, you have not to be vaccinated because they, they contain aborted fetus. Unfortunately, I myself, I have a Catholic background, uh, myself, even during the normally of the Mass on the Christmas Day last year, uh, attended, <laughs> uh, had the misfortune to attend of, of one of these conspiracy during the Mass by a priest. Uh, the church has already intervened, but uh, for example, uh, we have some some stretch, some striking cases uh, with a lot of audience. Uh, uh, maybe uh, some of you uh, can uh, can have heard about Radio Maria. This is an officially an, uh, an international religious broadcast that should broadcast only religious programs and moments of prayer. But it's found that this is a priest. Uh, this is also a main animator, Father Livio Fanzaghi, instead is one of the prominent names uh, in the world of Italian fake news. Uh, um, two thesis of, above all to, to, to give you a, an idea of, of what uh, uh, he said uh, during the sermon. So you will, you will remember the, the earthquake that destroyed many countries in Central Italy in 2016, uh, causing over uh, four, um, 400 of deaths. Uh, according to Father Livio, that, that earthquake was God's punishment because a few months earlier, the Italian parliament approved the law in favor of civil unions uh, between uh, people, uh, same, same sex people. Uh, or again, a COVID pandemic is not a random project uh, which does not come from bus or from one market. It has developed uh, as a very specific project to hit the Western countries, a criminal project or a world list to eliminate those who are not there and reduce us to zombies. He uh, says during the program in Radio Maria. Unfortunately, conspiracy theory in Italy uh, have also arrived in the Italian parliament, not only driven by some right wing deputies, but we have a, a deputy named Sara Cunial, who was expelled uh, from five star populist movement precisely for, uh, for this extreme, uh, extreme perspective perf and uh, points of view, and which uh, she continues to, to carry on thanks to the fact she's invited to almost this event organized by fake news spreaders. All right, thank you, Manuela. It was a very comprehensive introduction. Um, now, I think perhaps it's time to um, uh, see if any of our participants have any questions. 
before we go on to the next round uh, from our panelists. Any questions from the audience, please raise your hand. I just wonder what the panelists think. How do we enable people to think critically, to examine evidence before making decisions about things? Um, what we call, we're talking about fake news, but um, the news or the, the sort of academic process of examining evidence and, and uh, sourcing it is something which not everybody is able to do. So how do we get people to be critical and to base their opinions on evidence and not for fake news? Yeah, thank you for this excellent and very important question, because this is basically our struggle as media literacy trainers, or even if you talk about awareness for media literacy and, and disinformation, this is what you always think about, and there are um, different answers to, to your questions. Now, I think what we need to take into account is that um, uh, you said something very important. Not everybody of, not anybody of us is actually able to, to fact check, able to check sources and, and to, to research reliable information. And this is exactly what we need to change because um, in these days, everybody is a little journalist because everybody is also a publisher. We have social media and it doesn't matter if you have uh, 100 followers or 10,000. We know that every kind of false information or true information can go viral and you make a good tweet and you go viral all around the world and you don't need to be a celebrity to reach a very huge audience and this is um, what not only what we need to make people aware of we need to 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 teach them in their responsibility we need uh, we need to um provide them with the tools, with the fact-checking websites, with um, some kind of basic training. Yeah, They don't need to be a, a journalist for the New York Times. It's not like that, but they need to have a kind of um, responsibility, a kind of awareness for, for their um, behavior on social networks, for instance. And yes, they need... Um, they need reliable sources. And I think um, we should also prepare access to reliable sources, even scientific sources, because this is what we not do at the moment. Um, if you take a look at, at medical studies, there is always a kind of a filter. You need a medical uh, um, a scientific journalist for, for public communication. So you don't get the same information as a doctor does. Uh, but I think we need to um, interchange this, this kind of information more quick, uh, more reliable. And um, if we work on media literacy and if we provide it for the whole population in all countries worldwide, yeah, then um, I think there could be a kind of um, development. But um, if we're talking about radicals, if we're talking about ideology, and uh, thank you very much for Emmanuel. Um, he mentioned a lot of sources of, of extremist views. I think um, there is um, sometimes no chance because they have other motives. They have maybe financial or political or ideolo ideology um, beyond their views, and then there's nothing we can do. Yes, um, thank you. and. Uh... Teresa wanted to reply, Ben Emanuel has requested to speak, and Adam Baca has queued up with another question. So Teresa, please go ahead. Yeah, um, how can you avoid falling for fake news online? Um, of course, check known and verified accounts on social media and websites. Um, use Google by doing research. For example, you all remember when Donald Trump said, um, drink disinfectant against Corona. Um, just use this line, drinking disinfectant against Corona, fake news and Google it. If you can't easily find the information, it might be fake. And um, if a post, a email, a picture, a video or a link looks suspicious and you have a gut feeling for this, then it probably is. And um, be aware that it is possible that accounts or authorities are being copied, as you have seen before with this Vanessa Tradano kind of thing I showed, um, or hack to share a fake news which has never been spread by the original accounts. Um, yeah, 
there are certainly some um, points you can um, check on whether you are falling um, for a fake account or not. Um, I would like to just mention a few of them. Um, who or what is the news source? Is it well known? So if you're sharing anonymous posts um, saying uh, COVID is a, is a hoax or something like that, yeah, well, then it might not be a serious uh, news source. Then is the information a fact or is it just a personal opinion? Are you sharing the information from a blog or is it really a fact? Or um, is the information trying to change your views or your behavior? Is there only a headline or a teaser that expects a reaction from you like anger, fear, um, and makes you, yeah, like this clickbaiting. Does it make you want to click the link? So that might also be uh, an alarm sign that you're, um, that this might be fake. And then also is the text accurately written or does it include a lot of um, spelling errors or poor grammar? Because that might also be a reason that you might be falling for a fake news here. Yeah, that is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Theresa and Emanuela, a quick reply. And then um, uh, Adam, who is queued up to have a question. Uh, to answer to, to Geoff, uh, I think it's it's a very difficult job, but we have to do. Uh, but I think it's important to, to know what kind of audience uh, we are talking to and what is the situation of the, of the people we are talking to. For example, I was talking for Italy. Uh, Italy, for example, uh, is in the last place for uh, English knowledge, for example. So Italian people uh, have this problem. And I think, for example, we in Italy are living a sort of big uh, brainwashing uh, and and those people who who, uh, who manage the which manage this uh, this blogger this site or this this TV uh, use this uh, this situation. Uh, I, I quoted uh, Bio Blue for example, and Claudio Massola says, "If uh, mainstream media says a thing, we say it's completely the opposite because." People wants to say the opposite. One wants to uh, to hear the opposite to the main thing. So uh, that's they say it's not important that if we are saying something that is true or a false. It's the opposite because people wants to say the opposite to the, to the main thing. So th this is a big play, uh, a, a big uh, uh, dirty play. Uh, they they make some money about this. Uh, so we have to. We have to try to, to insist that uh, uh, a blog or uh, a meme with the photos is, is not uh, uh, a link to, uh, to share uh, a correct information. I, I can make an example. Uh, there is some, some site that, that parody these uh, this, uh, um, fake news spreaders, and they made uh, uh, some memes with uh, uh, fake fake news, but they made some uh, Italian uh, grammar error on uh, on this meme, and and people and there are a lot of people that uh, that share this this meme and only because they they read the, the fake information and they don't don't see uh, that there is a, uh, a, a, an Italian grammar uh, error made, especially to 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 show that that. that they they don't use a, a brain, but but only the so much to 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 share this. So it, it's a it's a difficult fight. We have we have to uh, we have to do, but uh, uh, we have to try. Okay, thank you, Emanuele. Um, now, Adam, uh, you had a question. Please unmute. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will be quick, uh, and thanks for organizing this event. It's a very crucial topic, I would say. 
I would challenge the panelists uh, in regard to discussion because of course, like critical thinking would be important. Education is important, but what to do or what, how, what would you say what we should do if a populist government uh, tries to define what is fake news and what's not? And uh, I'm from uh, Hungary, from Momentum. Uh, so I have some experience uh, in this area, like when uh, the government tries to like say like, okay, fake news is uh, anything what they don't say out loud and you are not allowed to spread fake news, otherwise it's a crime and you can get, uh, get arrested. And that happened to one of our members in the party who was revealing some information about uh, the COVID situation in some hospitals. Or like when uh, even public media out of government uh, funds is spreading fake news around migration um, and uh, like trying to like just make people scared about uh, the immigration crisis. What to do then? Because there it's super hard to educate people about like, okay, but this is fake news. Yeah, but the government said it. It's in the TV, it's in the radio, it's everywhere. It's official. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. So a very quick reply from our panelists, perhaps, uh, Dietmar. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. This is a nightmare, actually, what you are describing. This is the nightmare of, of anybody who wants to educate people in media literacy, because if the government uh, defines what is the education plan, if the um, government is defining what they are teaching in schools and universities, then um, you are doomed if you want to create a society aware of media literacy, of, of, of the importance of freedom of the press. And I'm aware of the situation in, in Hungary. Uh, we have some similar developments in Poland. Uh, I would not yet compare it to the situation in Russia or even Belarus, where there is actually no free media anymore. Um, but it's it's really, uh, it, it worries me a lot. And I think um, if we talk about uh, media literacy, for instance, I can give you one answer. If you uh, want to know um, what can a government do to define their own rules in what is fake news, what is disinformation, what not? On a political field, this is very dangerous. But if we are talking about science, it's very clear because science is what it is. So um, there is gravity. There is no you can bargain about it, yeah. So gravity is that is, um, and and in medicine somehow too, yeah. A virus is a virus, and it works like it works, yeah. So I think um, we can counter this um, challenge in a or this threat in an on an international level, but about the political disinformation within a country, also within the European Union, this is very difficult and crucial. Also, if we uh, talk about uh, what kind of options we have to to regulate social networks, for instance, Facebook, yeah, because freedom of speech and then fake news disinformation, this is there is a whole dynamic, and we need to talk a lot about this. And this is uh, today uh, why we are all here. That's very good. Thank you, Dietmar. Something I'd like to add is that uh, we are in a specific moment in history when. Um, it's very easy to take scientists to task and contradict them because we, we know, knew so little about COVID when it started and we are learning something every day. So you can easily go back saying, oh, but six months ago, you said we should be doing this or we should have been doing that. Yes, of course, six months ago, we didn't know. And scientists learn every single day and, and ignorant people take advantage of it to, to create fake news saying, oh, but the scientists contradict themselves. Yes, because science is evolving. Thank you very much. Uh, Teresa, Emanuela, would you like to add anything? Yes, I just wrote also in, in the chat, um, I see the European Union, they're in responsibility and they should stop funds for the country that um, is spreading fake news and uh, really stop the funding and not discuss it for many, many months. Right away. I, I, I only want to add that uh, as, as uh, for what Dietmar, Dietmar said about science and uh, scientists and, uh, and doctors, uh, we have a, a, a famous uh, TV doctor 
uh, and professor uh, in the university that says science is not democratic. So <laughs> I don't uh, answer, I don't talk with people that uh, uh, have not studied uh, virology or uh, that, uh, that, that, that don't, don't study medicine. And people respond to him, I studied, I go on YouTube, so I studied, so I can talk to you. Uh, and uh, you, you can talk because you are paid by the, the by big pharma. So uh, you are not. Uh, I, I I trust. Uh, I trust more to uh, scientists and doctors uh, that have been suspended by uh, by medical order because they they spread fake news about uh, virus about medicine, but they uh, will be suspended because they share the truth. We have, we have also a newspaper called that called itself the truth. Uh, Helder, you had a question. Uh, well, I, I would like to make a, a small reflection uh, uh, before uh, my question is that uh, nowadays the newspapers or the medias, uh, they're struggling to adapt to the new technologies uh, and the way how they can sell the, the information or the information services. Uh, on the news, and we we, we see in, in many news uh, online that uh, well there is a, a lack of real content uh, since that uh, the the articles the small articles were made by work students or something like that uh, the, they don't look professional the, there is a lack uh, of ethics uh, they are even copying uh, content from uh, Twitter from some different sources that are, are then they don't contrast the, the the information and if, if a newspaper that in theory is a, a professional service of news they don't check the information uh, what we can expect from the average citizen when they are reading i don't know google news or, or, or some other source and they they they, they, they find this uh, fake news that had been repeated, and as they are repeated so many times that it become uh, uh, true, even if it is false. Uh, then, uh, for me also, uh, the, the main problem is not only about the trolls, as uh, Teresa was explaining, but also the people who assume that that information is real, and then is uh, and they, they found some sources from a doctor, so a reputable doctor here and there. And this guy that looks so serious is a very nice uh, suit, uh, talking about uh, 5G will control your minds or whatever uh, fake information. Uh, and then it is hard to discuss and to, to argument uh, with people uh, because uh, the, there is a, a considerable portion of the population that assumes that the, that is true and, and then keep spreading the, the fake news. Um, and then I think that is how we can teach the people to try to contrast at, at least the, the information uh, um, and do not believe the first things that they, they got on, the, on their hands. I, I can give you a, an example. A recent, on these days, uh, a YouTuber that I follow, he was saying that uh, the president of the European Commission, uh, she want to derogate the uh, Nuremberg uh, law. Then I was surprised at how this lady <laughs> want to do that. And then I started researching, and then I found an article saying that that was uh, fake news, in fact. But this guy keep repeating the same. I, I post a comment uh, uh, on YouTube that it was uh, fake, uh, but the, the guy even, the, he made a, another video talking about that. Uh, and then he, he was supported by some uh, newspapers, even that uh, fake news. Uh, then uh, we have two problems. We have the media, and then we have the people that are repeating like parrots, uh, the, the same uh, fake information. Uh, and then we, we need to also, uh, to target uh, uh, th those uh, sorts of, of problems. 
Any more questions now, or shall we carry on? Perhaps uh, we we are running out of time, so perhaps we could have uh, conclusive remarks from our speakers. Uh, perhaps uh, there are no other just questions. Okay, Dietmar, if you'd just like to give us a conclusion on your side, and then we'll go to Teresa and Emanuele. We have about a couple of minutes each. Thank you. Yeah, first, thank you very much for the opinions and for for the different views. And we, we discussed a lot about the sources of this information. We, we discussed possible solutions. And I think on the end, um, it has to be a kind of a mix of, of, of several measurements we can we can apply to, to counter this uh, huge challenge for our societies. And maybe um, if there is something good, and I don't think there is anything good, of course, I need to be very careful with my words, but if there's something we can learn from this um, pandemic, is that at least we have some awareness about um, what our, our last speaker already mentioned is that the disinformation, it's not only a problem about uh, somebody spreading disinformation, it's also about the effect it has. Yeah? And we have a certain effect that we can measure. We have people that don't get vaccinated. Yeah, So you can put it on the table. And um, if we take a look at um, disinformation campaigns in the last 10 years, most of them were or, or fake news or anything like that. Most of it was created to make people vote for a certain party or make people not vote for a certain party or um, make people go to a rally or make um, divide the society. It was all about opinion. It was about the information environment to create a narrative, to spread the narrative. For instance, the Russian did it to spread a narrative about their history, about their um, geopolitical um, influence and, and opinions. But now we have something completely different because we have an effect that we can measure on the streets. We can ask 10 people and maybe three are not vaccinated because they believe in all the disinformation they heard online. And um, we see that disinformation is not only a topic of academic um, of the academic environment, it is something that affects us and affects society, and we need to act now, not tomorrow. Thank you, Dietmar. And um, Theresa, would you like to give us a couple of minutes conclusion? What we have seen here in, in our panel is um, that fake news, that one of the dangers of, of fake news is um, when they are shared online, they have a potential influence on the beliefs and behavior, behaviors, um, but also to introduce people to extreme ideologies um, around politics, ethnicities, religion, and sexual identity. Um, fake news are more or less presented as a fact, mostly by right-wing parties and their politicians homophobic organizations and racist individuals. And uh, this can also lead to, to severe other problems. For instance, that um, people believing and sharing the fake news um, might be trapped in some kind of a social media filter bubble where um, the same extreme views are shared and seen as the only truth. And um, you can, they can be found in private social media channels or groups or on platforms like Telegram. Telegram is really bad in um, spreading disinformation and fake news because it is unfiltered and not censored. Um, where you then find only like-minded uh, individuals um, who, who are welcomed there and they interact with each other. And um, then you have people with a different point of view who try to get into those telegram groups um, and they will be silenced or kicked out of the platform. And that results that um, opinions will turn more and more extreme. And then for the people inside, this can also lead to some kind of an addiction um, where the individuals isolate, isolate themselves from their family and friends. Um, because the other people around them do not share the same point of view. And um, 
also when you when you check the news what kind of um, information on telegram is shared by um, anti-vaxxers covidiots um, like wanting to kill politicians that is just incredible i have no words and absolutely no tolerance for that anymore thank you teresa and um uh, now emanuele final words and then i'll have an announcement before we close down uh no my final words and i'm writing uh writing that mark uh, but i can share with you in voice and there are a lot of uh, of fact checking site in, in Italy, for example, but I, I know also outside Italy there are there are a lot of, of fact checking sites. They do a, a very good job, but uh, when people that uh, trust to fake news read the fact checking, and you can demonstrate with uh, with with link with science link uh, with uh, uh, that that. The, this fact checking site uh, 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 are, are made uh, uh, the, uh, their job, but they answer oh, uh, they they say they say that way because uh, they are paid to those who wants to move to the real truth. They they are not the real truth. Why they call themselves fact checking? Uh, that they, they they think uh, uh, they allow them to to call themselves fact checking because they they only think to to have the truth and we found the truth on on, on facebook on facebook on youtube uh, on uh, on my cousin uh, on uh, on the brother of my cousin uh, and so <laughs> that that's the truth why why, why i have to uh, to, to, to trust on, on, the, on the society, they 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 all they all part of a big system uh, of of a, of a big public system, the Great Reset, they call the of a Great Reset. But I think that these people who spread uh, who are spreading the fake news are making a big mental reset to those people. And I, I am very, uh, I'm seriously worried about it. Uh, I think uh, we, we have to, to do something very, uh, very strong and, and very soon because um, or, 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 or we, we can, uh, we risk to, to, to be uh, completely uh, overwhelmed by, uh, by this wave. Thank you, Manuela. Well, that's very clear from uh, from what we heard this evening is uh, that we are in a, in a strange moment, in a very dangerous moment, and perhaps the worst, the most dangerous virus we are all faced with is not just COVID, which is a very dangerous virus, but it's a fact-resistant virus. People simply don't trust facts. They seem to despise facts and and facts are the enemy. So you can give them all the fact checking you want, they refuse to admit it simply because they are infected with fact resistance. And um, just to conclude this evening, thank you very much to the panelists, Dietmar, Teresa, and Emanuele for your contributions. And thank you very much for the participants, for your questions and for your participation. One last word before you go. Um, on the 10th of January, we have another webinar, which should be very interesting, with Natalia Pellerina and Dmitry Bridze about prospects for change in Russia and Europe's role in Russia's political transformation. And of course, fake news or, or manipulation of news is a huge part of it, but we leave to uh, Natalia and Dmitry to, to present their case. Uh, they are members of uh, the opposition. Dmitry uh, lives in Turkey, Natalia in Russia. So they will tell us what they know and what they think about the situation there and what they would like us to do about it, what we could possibly do. Uh, 10th of January, 2030, Central European time, like tonight. And thank you very much to all for your participation.